Hello everyone, this is Anushri and this is Medha and we on behalf of the Beaming Notes team can't thank you enough for your overwhelming support over the past few years. It is because of your love and appreciation that we have been able to launch our very own YouTube channel. And we need your support this time as well. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button and show us some love. And now, let's head over to the video. Hey everybody, welcome to Beaming Notes. And today we're going to look at the critical analysis of the poem The Heart of the Tree by Henry Kyler Bunner. Critical Analysis in the heart of the tree, Henry Kyler Bunner has attempted to highlight the importance of planting trees in a nation. He begins every stanza by asking a rhetorical question, what does he plant who plants a tree? And closes his stanza by highlighting the impact of trees in the environment. By doing so, he makes the readers ponder over the issue and eventually answer on his own. The language of the poem is very simple and lucid. The poet begins to explain the usefulness of planting trees as he says that the one who plants a tree plants a friend of the sun and the sky. It is because the trees always aim for the sun and the sky, that is, it grows upwards to reach the sky. Again, the sun provides sunlight to the tree which is vital to carry out the process of photosynthesis to make food for plants. Trees take up carbon dioxide from the air and release oxygen thereby purifying the air around. The poet compares the tree to a flag. Just like the flag moves freely in the breeze, the leafy branches of the tree also flutter and provide cool breeze to us. Trees for the poet are the epitome of beauty on earth. He further adds that when a man plants a tree, he plants a home for the birds that sing in harmonious voice. The trees become the natural habitat of the birds and hence the balance in the ecosystem is restored. In the second stanza too, the poet asks the same question. He wishes to add more points to encourage his readers to plant trees. He says that the tree provides cool shade to all, to birds, to animals and to human beings. It is now an unknown fact that trees help in causing rain. Trees bear seeds and bud for future generations and continue the process of birth, death and regeneration. They make the plain area look naturally beautiful. When the poet says that a man plants a forest's heritage, he means that if anyone takes the initiator to plant a single tree, then in future it might grow into a forest, thereby enriching the natural beauty of the planet. Our future progenies will enjoy all the benefits of the trees that we plant today. The poet brings into limelight not only the present benefits of planting trees, but also the benefits our future generations would reap. The poet adds a philosophical element to the poem as he says that a man who plants a tree does so out of his concern for his family, his neighborhood and the entire universe. When a man plants a tree, he fulfills his civic duty. He says that by planting a tree, a man is making ways for fellow human beings to access food and wood. By doing so, the man is directly able to contribute to the nature's growth. We see a capitalization in the word his in the last stanza used to refer to the person who plants trees. He has been attributed godlike abilities to plan the destiny for the nation. He holds the growth of the nation in his hands. Through such simple yet powerful narration, the poet has successfully pointed out that the tree can itself be regarded as the heart of human life that looks over the well-being of everyone. It is the tree which is responsible for the growth of mankind and the one who plants them must be respected for his noble deed. Poetic Devices Alliteration Alliteration is a close repetition of consonant sounds usually at the beginning of words. For instance, he plants a friend of sun and sky. He plants a home to heaven and I. In hushed and happy twilight heart, he plants a flag of breezes free. Metonymy Metonymy is a figure of speech in which one word or phrase is substituted by something that is closely associated with it. In this poem, the phrases cool shade, tender rain, sap and leaf and wood are metonymies for tree. In the first stanza in the line, he plants a home to heaven and I, heaven represents the sky. Polysyndeton it is a figure of speech used for close repetition of conjunctions. For instance, he plants in sap and leaf in wood. Transferred epithet. 
It is a figure of speech in which an adjective qualifies a noun and not the person or thing it is originally describing. For instance, in a hushed and happy twilight herd, here the adjective happy qualifies twilight, though it means people's happiness. Twilight is not happy, the people are happy, but still twilight is qualified by happy. Metaphor it is a figure of speech in which a similarity between two different things is implied, but not directly stated. In this poem, the branches of a tree are compared to a flag. For instance, he plants the flag of breezes free. Personification It is a figure of speech in which abstract ideas or inanimate objects are given attributes of living beings. For instance, the poet personifies a tree when it calls it a friend of sun and sky. Form and structure. The poem consists of three stanzas of nine lines each. It can be roughly said that the poem follows a rhyme scheme A B A B B C C A A. For instance, the rhyming words in the first stanza are tree free, sky high an eye, bird heard, harmony, tree. What does he plant who plants a tree? He plants a friend of sun and sky. He plants a flag of breezes free, the shaft of beauty towering high. He plants a home to heaven and I, for song and mother croon of bird, in hush and happy twilight heard, the treble of heaven's harmony, these things he plants who plants a tree. Theme Benefits of Planting Trees The poet attempts to educate the readers about the importance of planting trees for our survival. This poem glorifies the act of planting trees and equates the man who does so with godlike attributes. Trees do not only serve to beautify the nature, but also provide a home for the birds and offer us cool shade. They are the harbinger of rain and the source of cool breezes. They keep the environment balanced by taking in carbon dioxide and giving out oxygen. Trees reduce pollution in the air. They never cease to exist as they continue the process of regeneration by shedding seeds and leaves that give birth to new plants needed to maintain balance in the ecosystem. Trees are important for the survival of mankind as they not only bless the souls of today, but also provide our future generations with its harvest. Just like the human heart helps in the proper functioning of the human body, trees too maintain the lives of birds, animals and human beings on earth. The poet gives a message that we must plant new trees to ensure a harmonious and stable way of living for us and for the generations to come. Importance of Trees for a Sustainable Future the poet says that when one plants trees today, he actually plants it for the future progenies. He is concerned about the future of Mother Earth and hence fulfills his civic duty by showering his blessings on the neighborhood in form of plants. Trees are needed for the growth and development of the nation in general. We cannot survive in a land with no trees. The poet thus appeals to the readers to plant more and more trees in order to prevent the environment from degrading. We must plant trees, keeping in mind the welfare of the coming age. Tone The tone of the poem is inspiring, straightforward and educative. The poet is concerned about the mother earth and lays down different points to illustrate the usefulness of trees to protect the earth. He encourages everyone to plant more trees, not only for themselves, but also for the future generations. The survival of the future generations is greatly dependent on our outlook to plant trees. Trees keep the environment stable by purifying the air, causing rain, offering cool breeze and shade, providing food, wood and medicines and by providing home for birds in the sky. The poet uses simple words to deliver his message that tree plantation is no longer a hobby or luxury, but it is indeed a necessity for our survival. So, did you find the video helpful? If so, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and continue to encourage us more to deliver more such poem analysis and English language tips to help you to get set and ready for your examinations. All the best.